G'day and welcome back for more Space Engineers Survival. Yesterday I showed you all what I'd done with the goose and a lot of that was done with creative. Well, survival mode turned into creative mode with the Alt F10 menu. And the reason I wanted to do a few little upgrades to the goose before uploading it to the workshop was I wanted to show the best version of the goose that I could come up with. And I wanted to have things like reactors on there. Little stuff that I wouldn't necessarily want to add in this survival game, but that I thought the goose should benefit from while it's on the workshop. And it was also a lot easier to do it that way, to fix the little things that I normally wouldn't worry about. Stuff like those couple of unwelded blocks that are in between the cargo containers, the gap that was in between the cargo containers, things like that. But there is one upgrade that I definitely, definitely need to add to the goose in this survival playthrough. And that was the upgrade that I did to the conveyor sorters. Those conveyor sorters are going to be the bane of my existence right now. It was suggested to me in the comments that I should parallelize them like I did in the workshop version when I first put them in and I completely forgot to until I was uploading it to the workshop and that was a mistake because now I'm going to have to transfer stuff manually because it's going to be incredibly slow. Why aren't you locking? There we go. As we can see here, if we go to our thing here and then we go large cargo containers. Nothing's happening. Oh, I don't think I even set up the sorters. Did I? The sorter. The single sorter. Where is it? Small conveyor sorter. I don't think I've set it up at all. No, I haven't. I completely forgot to do that. Whitelist. Or add drain all. Now what's happening? Nothing. Ah, here we go. That's going to be very slow. So let's do this. Let's just drag it manually across into our large cargo container because we don't need all of this in here. There we go. I'm going to have to do that every time because it's going to be so, so slow otherwise. And apparently I've got some silicon somewhere. That I do. There we go. And that's one container full. And let's go back to mine the next bit. Thrusters on, lift off. Oh dear. Oh dear. Uh, hmm. It would appear I would prefer to balance... Or I would be better off balancing <laughs> where I put the uh, materials. Let's do things this way. I'm going to need to put... Oh, I'm on quite the slope. That would be why. I'm going to need to put some in this container. So, if we go large cargo containers. Let's grab all of it. And there we go. Now we're back on solidish ground. That's something we're going to have to keep in mind. Hmm. <laughs> Could be a problem. I may even at some stage... Where's the hole? Where's my mine hole? Oh dear, I can't see it. This isn't good. Ah, there it is. <sighs> I may need to fiddle with that later so that uh, we are parked on slightly flatter ground. So that is probably less than optimal. Now, the reason I came down to do all this that um, I didn't really talk about, actually. I think I mentioned it once, but I'll say it again. The reason I wanted to mine all this iron out is that I want... Well, I'm going to need it all so that we can build all of the blocks for the hangar. The hangar is going to take up an enormous amount of iron. There are a lot of blocks in the floor, and even though I'm only doing the roof and the walls with a bare framework of sorts, it's still going to use a lot of iron. And I thought that the truck would be an efficient way of getting the, getting the iron 
from down here at the mine and up to the base without having to fly the butterball back and forth as I've been pretty comfortable with my energy supplies for a while now and I don't really want that to change so I don't want to do anything that's going to make it worse I don't want to do anything that's going to unnecessarily waste power and then get myself caught in a situation where I'm lacking I'd much rather build up a bit of a reserve and have that cushion in place. Especially while I'm doing all this fancy design work and not really doing much else. There were a couple of other things I'd wanted to talk about while we get this mining done. And believe me, there's a lot of mining to be done here. But I wonder how much iron I've actually got left in this deposit. I wonder if I'm actually going to, at some point, run out here. If I do, I'm going to have potentially some issues as I'm going to have to figure out if there's another mining, another iron deposit in the valley, and if not, how I'm going to get the truck to that other deposit. Whether it's up on the plateau behind the base, and I'll need to build some form of, I guess, maybe a bridge or something to get up there, or go with a tunnel and a vehicle lift inside the mountain. That could be kind of fun to build. It'd also be insanely time-consuming, but it could be fun. Hmm. Thoughts? I suppose I could, with a vehicle lift of some sort, also turn it into a vehicle uh, turntable, I guess is what we'd call it. Something that would allow me to turn the goose around while inside and without having to steer the trailer combo around and make me look like a Gumby every time I try and do it. And let's whack more in that. More in that. Iron. No, that's not how you spell iron. And we may as well fill this one up first. I don't know which one's which. So if we see some tilting when I get off this, hopefully... Maybe if I just evenly spread it between them. Actually, that's probably smarter. If I just spread it equally, I shouldn't cause this to tip. Okay. Looking good so far. Excellent. I was talking about something and I totally lost my train of thought. My train of thought was the turntable for the vehicle. So if I could combine a lift with a turntable, I could do both. Which would stop me having to turn around. Hmm. That's all probably for another day, though, or much later on. That sounds like a really big project. And I would like to at least give myself a little bit more freedom from our enemy bases first. So, particularly if I have to go hunting down iron, it would be really nice to be able to clear that enemy base from the other side of the lake. And I don't know a whole deal about that base. I remember building it back when I set up this world, <laughs> but I don't remember which one I actually put there. So, conveniently, I set this up so long ago that I've actually forgotten what bases are where, where the enemy is, and all that sort of stuff. So, we certainly need to get some recon going on that. And I've got a few ideas about how we could do that. And... I like one of them in particular. I like the idea of something mostly disposable that I could fly over there remotely, of course. I don't want to put my own body at risk. That could use a camera to hopefully get a bit of a zoomed in image of the base to give me an idea of what I would need to target it. And then ultimately, I think one of the things I will need to do when I attack the base is either somehow neutralize the drone spawns that come from the antenna, either by destroying the antenna or by bringing along something big enough that it can just sit there and chew through any spawns that come out, which could be a field of our little sandbags. If I set up them within the spawn range and just keep letting them come for me, those sandbags should be able to cope with the threat until they run out of ammunition, which... If I give them a little bit of extra cargo, could be quite a while. So that's an option. Another option would be a mobile thing, either a trailer for the goose that's got, well, basically turrets all over it, 
We could even use a trailer with a conversion to a large grid to get a turret that has an even bigger range. That could be an option. That could actually be a good option. But I think what I would like to do is first build the drone. Oops, I am way overweight. I was not paying attention. Ooh, I should have been paying attention to that. that this could be a problem. 5,000 kilos over my ideal weight here. I don't think I can do that boxing trick of sweating it out. Okay, let's see if this is okay. I'm not feeling confident about this landing, but I'm going to have to do it. Let's go down. Oh. Okay. So, what I was thinking was, if we build the drone to scout out so that we know where the antenna is on the base, we could then build a missile trailer for the goose. And I really like the idea of a missile trailer. One, because I think it'll look cool. Um, actually, that's pretty much the only reason. I think it'll look cool. That's why I want to do it. And... If I can pull that off and then build some sort of missile that would be able to hit the antenna on the enemy base, I'd then have no worries about any enemy drones spawning. So I'd be able to get up relatively close to the base, just staying outside of its gun range, which should be 800 meters or so. So if I can stay outside that range, I then get a much better view of it. And then there's something silly I want to do for this first attack. Something totally ridiculous. I just have been wanting to do it ever since I built that pumpkin chunking, pumpkin chunking, however you want to say it, thing when I was toying with rotors and pistons after the big physics update. I want to build basically a rotor based catapult so that I can launch warheads at the enemy base and if I can get them somewhat accurate I might be able to pummel its turrets from a fair distance away and if not what I'd like to do instead is launch some dead well not dead but some decoys surrounded in heavy armor and if we can launch a package of them at one go if they last long enough, we might be able to run in there with a small vehicle, even something as little as the tick, and do a surgical strike and take out the turrets under the cover of all those decoys. And I think that could be an awful lot of fun. We could even make the decoys a bit more obvious, as in when they get destroyed, by perhaps figuring out a way if we can launch them with a parachute. But that would mean a battery, so that might make them a bit too heavy. And I guess if I ended up launching a heavy armor decoy into the enemy base and hit it, it'll probably do some damage anyway, so that's not a bad thing. Even if it doesn't work to distract <laughs> the enemy turrets. But I know there's much, much simpler ways for me to attack this base. I think you guys have worked out by now though that if I think of a fun, over the top way of doing something, I'm probably going to do it. Because that's kind of the engineering part of engin space engineers to me, is doing those stupid things that just make no sense. They really make no sense, but wow can they be fun. And I had an awful lot of fun driving around in the goose in creative mode that was just a barrel of laughs for me i enjoyed every moment of it even the bits when it didn't quite go to plan and i <laughs> flipped unexpectedly it was still fun and hopefully i'll be able to get that sort of feeling out of other aspects of this particularly when we're attacking the enemy base and it looks like we might have just one more load to get and thrusters on, lift off. Before I go much further, I'm going to check one thing that a lot of people have pointed out, and which I was suspicious of as well, but willing to take a chance on, which is, 
am I damaging all of this with my thrusters? It is looking good. So my careful landing, kind of straddling the wheel, puts the large thrusters either side of this wheel. And that means that when I've got a heavy load, I shouldn't end up burning anything. The small thrusters, I don't think their plume reaches the solar panel, which means that everything is fine. Just brilliant. Just brilliant. Very happy with that result. Very pleased that that worked out. I was kind of hopeful. And uh, I did mention it before. I kind of thought that the bugs might help me on that too. Thruster damage and half blocks just are a bit odd. Things like glass and LCDs sometimes seem to cop no damage whatsoever. You can even build a landing pad out of them, or you used to be able to, where you could never get any damage to those blocks, or catwalks even. For some reason, they just never got any thruster damage, which... Cheaty, but, you know, if you wanted to use LCDs to make, like, a painted parking zone for your ships, you could do that, which was kind of cool. Another thing I wanted to talk about, and I know I'm just rambling on here while... I mine and I just decided I'd try and give you guys a bit of insight to what my plans are for the future while we well while we get the resources to do though to build those plans and to enact them um, one of my other plans for the future is I would really like to add something to the goose in this survival scenario that is a really cool idea for a script and I am really sorry, I'm about to butcher your name, I suspect. But Etop Sir HC has written an amazing script, which I want to add to the goose. It's a script that will give me both a reversing beep every time I use the reverse on it, as well as having brake lights. And I think that'll be fun to add. I didn't want to put that on the goose on the creative mode workshop version yet. I wanted to add it in the survival first. So that's something I do want to add and hopefully we'll get around to today. My plans for the next few episodes are probably going to be... Uh oh, did it again, overload. Well, not really my plans for the next few episodes, my plan for the rest of this episode. Let's talk about that. Once I get back, I do want to try and build that uh, recon drone. Let's call it a recon drone. Because I want something so that we can go have a look at that enemy base. And hopefully... So we can see here that those plumes, they don't quite reach where I need to worry about. Oh, there we go. Let's get our inventory across... So I want to build that recon drone, and to do that, I guess we'll go with... Well, I suppose the most efficient way to do it would actually probably be to use the VTOL script. So that we just have a couple of thrusters on it, not a whole bunch of thrusters needed. That would probably work best. Hmm. That would be more efficient. We just need a programmable block, a remote control, and a few other bits and pieces, and we should be fine. That's definitely how I'm going to do it. Alright, now that I've unloaded, I'm going to rotate around and I'm going to land properly. And it looks like we're going to be heading back just at first light, which is kind of nice. We'll reach base probably as the sun comes up. I will be taking this trip a lot more gently than what I was doing in that other video. I'm not that silly. I'm not going up to 70 meters a second in survival. That's just idiotic. Okay, nice and square. Let's square it up a little bit more. There we go. Let's hop out. And this is where I thought I might demonstrate something else I discovered about this build. Ow. We can actually get everywhere on this without a jetpack. You can get underneath here, well at least when our suspension's not down as low as it can go, let's fix that. Let's go in, we've got our wheels, 
think from memory we need about this. Yeah, that looks good. So you can actually get underneath all of here. So we can get at all of these blocks. We can get underneath all of this easily. We can even get underneath these solar panels. So we can get at all of that with no jetpack. More impressively though, if I do this properly. Huh, and huh, and one more. We can actually get even up here. And more usefully, we can get to the Butterball's cockpit without using our jetpack from the ground. Yeah, it takes a little bit of parkour, but it works. And it works pretty well. So I think with our inventories nice and full, 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 pretty much full, 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 it's time for us to drive home. We need some lights. We need some other spotlights because the trailer ones don't turn on when I press L. And now I want to increase that to 100. And I want to take this very, very carefully. I do not want to lose the goose on its first voyage. We will use our braking thrusters as needed. We've got two days worth of charge while driving, so I don't think power is going to be an issue. And once we get back to base, we're going to be building the, well, building a temporary connector system so we can get all this ore out and start processing it so that we can make all of those steel plates, interior plates, construction components, girders, and everything else we need in order to build all of our hangar space. Because there are a lot of iron requiring components that are needed for that. Now, before we get too far, what I'm going to do is something just in case. I am going to add our, where are they? Reverse thrust. This is the group that is the reverse thrusters on the butterball, conveniently pointing to push us forward. So what we're going to do is have a toggle block on off. We're going to have an increased thrust override and a decreased thrust override. I'm going to crank the thrust override to maximum just in case we need it for getting up that little bit where it says way home. I'm suspicious from my toying around in creative survival mode thingy that when I get to that steep part and it is the steepest part of this journey and there's a corner we have to take when we get there. I'm suspicious I'm going to run out of thrust even with the booster thrusters with all this weight. But I'm hopeful that if we take advantage of the Butterball's thrusters, we will have enough and we'll get up there without any modifications to the vehicle, which is, I reckon, kind of cool. Let's get the booster thrusters on because we are not getting much momentum and we're going to need some. I'm going to switch to our other view so that we can, our other hotbar so that we can add in the Butterball's thrusters when we start needing them and see if we can get up this very, very, very steep part. And let's, okay, yeah, we are losing speed. We are losing a lot of speed and it's a bit rough each side of this. All right, let's hit the Butterball's thrusters. Yep, we're definitely going to stop. Let's go. Come on, Butterball. No! Come on! You guys can do it! Stop getting snagged on rocks! Come on! Come on! Come on! That's the way! That's the way, almost! Come on, you good thing. You can do it. Oh, you're so close. So close. Yes. Yes. Ah, -ha -ha. it's made it. <laughs> yes. Oh, that was a struggle, but it's done it. It's done it. Ah, oh, I love this build even more now. Oh, I should probably have been paying attention to the fact that I was accelerating a lot just then because I've got the boosters on. I'm going to leave them on for just a little bit longer until we get up this last little slope here. And... 
now we should be good to go on wheel power alone. Oh, yes. It works. <laughs> Took some jerry-rigging at the end because it definitely needed that boost from the butterball. But we did it. We are here. Oh, let's park just here because I don't want it to be in the way when I try and build this connector rig. Ah, oh, look at that. Look at that. You made it. You wonderful, wonderful thing. <laughs> yes. <sighs> All right. Enough of me gloating over the success of this build. Let's build a piston with a connector on the bottom in a temporary spot. Hmm. Where will that temporary spot be? I wonder, what if we... What if we break this center piece away? Or what if we move the whole thing back a whole bunch to give me some extra room on the floor? Because otherwise I'm going to have to build it all the way forward here so that the butterball... Not the butterball, so that the goose can even get underneath it. So, what I'm going to do is move all of these conveyor systems, all of these connectors, back to this row where the conveyor system already is. And then we'll run a temporary line straight up to the roof, across, and then down on a piston around here. Hopefully a single piston will be adequate. I think it should be because a single piston is four blocks. We've only got six in height, so a single will be more than enough. It'll be a little like one of those uh, coal or water loaders that steam trains used to have. Or at least if Thomas the Tank Engine is anything to go by. Alrighty. Plans are afoot. Let's move the... Oh, you cute little thing. <laughs> Let's move the Ugly Duckling. Oh, under those my lights. And uh, we want recharge off, park unlocked. Down we go. And thrusters off. You can just sit there for now. Alright, what do I need? I need to grind down one of those. Grind down one of these. And make sure that these have a block connected to them somewhere. Good, they do. Which means when I break the connector... The connector? The connector over here. Hopefully all of that won't just drop on the ground. Bugger. I need to dump a few things. <laughs> I'm not going to fit everything. Uh, Alright. Uh, oh, that's probably that. Let's grind off you. And replace you with... Where's our conveyor? Surely I've got one on here somewhere. I don't... How annoying. There we go. We want a conveyor junction. Weld you up. And then we'll whack a connector on top. And then the butterball. Not the butterball. I keep misnaming everything. This is very frustrating. Then the ugly duckling. How rude that I called it the butterball. Then the ugly duckling can have its pedestal back. Or at least when I get some more steel plates. We are going to need a cargo system on this base too. Speaking of plans for the future, that is something that is very much needed. Because we're not going to be able to disconnect the goose until everything's refined. Because we don't have enough storage space for all of the stuff that it's got on board. Hmm. That puts that much higher up the priorities. It does indeed. We'll have to think about that one. Where are we going to put it? And how are we going to get it built without it taking 12 years? Which seems to be about my usual build speed of things in this game. Because <laughs> I may get a little bit excited over the idea of making things pretty. Uh, we can grind that one off. And we'll go a corner one here. Remember, this is all just very, very temporary. Ooh. No, I won't do that. I was just thinking maybe I should put a horizontal piston in here somewhere, but I don't think that's a good idea. That's just adding complexity where I really, really don't need to. Now, I'm going to do this so that we don't end up with 
very low ceilings. One there, and then we grab our piston. And pistons conveniently have a... Oh. Pistons conveniently have the ability to pass stuff through them. So this will work just fine. Whack you on there. Oh dear. Oh dear dear. Are you going to be tall enough? Once I put the connector on there? I don't think you are. Oh no. That is not good. How will I deal with this? I wonder if I can get away with something. If I can do this with the conveyor system and kind of cheat my way without having to drill a hole in the ceiling because I really don't want to do that. That one's not high enough. Where have I got a bit of accidental deeper mining? If we go to our junction, can I place any of these in the roof? No! I can't. Oh yes! Yes, I can one. Alright. Is there another one I can place? Yes, there is. I'm going to do this. That'll work. That'll work nicely. Now, I can't use small ship, small grid pistons to try and squeeze things in here because they won't... Actually, I could. I was about to say I can't use them because I'll need to transfer large items, but I don't need to transfer large items. It's only ore that I'm transferring. I could have done that. I could have done a rotor conversion to a small grid piston to have and have its connector go on there, but I think we're going complicated enough, don't you? There we go. Can I get into there? Actually, can I get into there? That one? Yes. Maybe I'll grind you. Come on. Oh. Grind you down. Then grab... Hmm. Grab a few of these. See if that'll be enough for me to build it up. Because the one that I need to get to is this one that's hidden in here. Which was impossible for me to reach before. But now, I've got it. And this is the sort of fiddly stuff that I will sometimes do. <laughs> if I want to really preserve some rock. And the only reason I'm doing this is to preserve the rock ceiling. If I didn't have my desire for the rock to be exposed, I really wouldn't care how much I drilled out. So let's grind down the remainder of these and weld up onto our other bits. Hopefully we've got enough parts. Oh. Oh dear. I just realized something I've done that's a bit silly. Inside, this connector... It's a whole bunch of items. Ah! I'm going to have to transfer them manually if I don't reconnect everything. <sighs> oh dear. At least this one doesn't have any. Ah, jeez. Good job, Splitzy. Make a mess of things. Make yourself do more work. You could have moved those out of the way first, but no, you didn't. You left them intact. Left them full of stuff that's gonna have to be moved. Gah! Anything in this one before I dump it all on the ground? Nope. Thinking about my future problems with cargo, I could actually build a bit of a temporary solution quite easily. Right now I'm only using one small cargo container, so I could very easily add two or three more of those without breaking much of a sweat. And if I add six, that will be basically exactly the amount of space that I have on the goose. I believe that a small grid large cargo container is the same volume as a large grid small cargo container, which is convenient. And excuse me while I shuttle things back and forth because I didn't want to rebuild the cargo system. All right, this should do the trick. One, two, three. And that's all good. And piston is up. All right. 
Now, I... I'm going to be completely honest. I don't 100% remember which way I laid out the floor here. <laughs> so until I build it, I'm just going to do something lazy and temporary. I'm going to grab a bunch of steel plate and I'm just going to put down some light hammer blocks. So that since they occupy the bulk of the space, I'll need to get rid of the fewest when I get round to welding all of this up. And I... Because I don't remember which way around the uh, interior wall blocks went. And... Eh. It's only a little bit of work. You've seen how happy I am with a grinder. It'll be fine. Okay. We have a floor, which means we can drive the goose into position. And hopefully I have given myself enough room with what with with where? With the position of the piston connector. Let's not go internal view. Okay. Sneaking in. Sneaking in. That should be right. Let's line up side, side. Let's line up that way. Yeah, that's not too far off, I guess. Let's park there. Now, the delicate part. I need to extend this piston and stop it in time. And I am so using the build info mod for this. Velocity. Da, two, three, four, five. Let's move it as slow as possible. Uh oh. Can't move that far away. I don't want to crush the goose under this piston. I just want to get it in range, get it connected up, and get the ore unloaded. Once I know what distance I need this piston to go at, it'll all be nice and easy, but right now I don't know the extension distance. There we go. We could lock right now. Excellent. And I am going to realize that I haven't added this connector to the hotbar. Uh, I think it's connected to. Switch lock. We are locked. Oh, let's check it out. Yes. Yes. We are connected to the base. How are the refineries doing? They're full of iron. How about the arc furnaces? Full of iron too. We're going to have so much iron. We already have a fair bit. We're going to have so much iron. This is amazing. Okay. That's done. We can just kind of leave it there. What I'm going to do though, is I'm actually going to... How are these batteries? Fully recharged in two hours. They are gaining charge right now. What I might do is just set... Them. Oh, do we have enough charge in the base? This has current stored power, 3 megawatt hours. Oh, yeah, we're totally making all of these recharge. Recharge, recharge. Does everything disconnect when I do that? No, perfect. And the Butterball's batteries. These should also be on recharge. Except the script isn't going to let me do that. That's a problem. What if we briefly turn this off? Quickly grab these. Set them to recharge. I don't think this particular use situation is something that Izzy should have to deal with. <laughs> me attaching the truck to the base and expecting the butterball to magically figure that out that's just silly that's just me being ridiculous and having a way too complex situation but hopefully this should mean that all of those batteries will recharge and fingers crossed if we go upstairs down comes the elevator fingers crossed if we go upstairs we can check out our battery status of everything and it will all be good Oh, haven't ridden in this for a while, feels like. Oh no! I think I... 
<laughs> I think I broke the elevator a little bit then. Oops. Okay. How's our script doing? Now, is this running? Sometimes it seems to crash on me when I do a reload. Or when I must... I probably do something to the base. Uh, where is it? Programmable block, battery status. Court exception. Run. No. Edit. Check code. Okay, remember it exits. Okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, they're all pretty well maxed out. That's awesome. I need more batteries. Although I could have just looked up at Izzy's thing and seen it there too. <gasps> I need to do my map at some point. Okay, today is the day for talking about things and getting nothing done, apparently. Let's try and design a bit of a recon drone, shall we? We need a little base to start on. We need... We can clear a lot of this off our bar now, because this was all for building the goose. And what we need is an atmospheric thruster. We do need rotors. We need a remote control block. We need... don't need pistons, don't need that, don't need that. We need a gyroscope. A battery. And what else do we need? Camera. We need cameras. Okay. That should be everything. Now, let's start with a landing gear. Ah, there we go. And on top of the landing gear, let's place an unblock so we got a bit of spacing. Now, battery. We need a battery. We need a remote control block. Let's make forward this direction. Then we need a gyroscope. And finally, we need a rotor going this way. A rotor going this way. And let's just make this thing look a little bit stylish. And let's have a rotor going this way too. My plan with these is to... Do I have the stuff on me to weld them? Almost. Now, what I want to do with these is access them and increase their displacement on each of them. Oh, we're going to need a programmable block, aren't we? That's what else we need. I knew there was something I was missing. We need something to run the script. Then on these, we're going to have a thruster there. A thruster there. And a thruster there. We don't need technically these two across here, but eh, it should be okay. It'll make it a bit more fun. It'll make it a bit more balanced. Next up, we need a programmable block. That's what we need. Don't need the batteries anymore. Now, where shall we put this? Do I even want to armor this thing? Maybe not. Maybe I'll just leave it exactly as is. Let's whack a camera on the front and look at the little dot. Where is the... Oh, I can see the camera. There we go. Place it the correct way up so that I'm not confused. And... I'm suspicious. Ooh. Let's try a different connection method for this one so that we can recharge it off the base if we need to. I'm not going to build a full-on connector on this. All I'm going to do is build a rotor part on it and where I would like to build the rotor part, I have an armor block in the way. So I am going to add that under there. And hopefully that should mean that I'll be able to use it to settle down on a rotor I place somewhere in the hangar and just plop this down, tell the rotor to attach, and then this will become part of the base. And I'll be able to recharge its battery. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to weld all this up, and we'll be back once that is done. <sighs> As I was welding this, I realised I forgot a very important block. And that is the way that I'm going to control this, since I'm not going to have a seat on it. 
I need to have an antenna on here. If I don't have an antenna on here, I can't connect to it. And that doesn't really work. So... Oh! Oh, an even better idea than having the rotor attached to the base. I could have this launch off the tick. Oh. Do I dare? Do I dare have a rotor-based drone launch off the tick? Hmm. The reason I was thinking of that is the tick has an antenna that has a greater range than my suit. Hmm. Well, think about that. So, I need to attach an antenna to this thing. And it's getting a little bit crowded on top, but that's where it's going to go. Let's maybe place it like that. I'm going to make this thing super ugly, it looks like. Oh yeah, yeah. Alright, I need some battery components and then we're done. Production and power cells. I need 20 of them. Uh oh. We have silicon. Really? Really? Oh man. <sighs> Lucky we brought some home. Maybe that's why I had some of it in the. Oh, had I already used all that up? Wow. I must have collected some before, but I don't remember doing it. Uh, production. Are we getting more? No. Is the assembler's inventory full? It must be. Ah, it is. So this is a problem that you can run into sometimes. You'll think you don't have the resources, but that's just because the assembler has grabbed a bunch of resources for components you haven't ended up building. And you then need to clear it out so that it can then pull in the silicon that you do have to construct the things you need. And it's very unfortunate that that happens, but it's a reality of being like me and constantly changing your mind. Alright, let's grab those power cells. There we go. And this thing should be ready to rock and roll. Yes, indeed. Now, we need to log into this thing so we can set up the script. And I am not broadcasting right now. So, if you look up your HUD, just over this area, where it says JXOL, if you're not broadcasting, you can't connect. Now, when I try, I can! Yay! I can even go straight to control. But I don't want to. I want to go to terminal. I want to go to the programmable block. I want to edit. And I want to browse the workshop. And what I want is... Somewhere here. Vector thrust 2. Okay. Check code. Okay. Remember an exit. And look. All of the rot rotors aligned perfectly. We're good to go. Now. I can't remember <laughs> what I needed to do to set up the hotbar. I'm going to have to check that. And once I've checked that, I will set it up again. Okay, everything's on. Let's grind away this armor block. And nicely hovering. Yay! It works. It works. Alright. Now, what I want to do with this is hop in. Terminal. Antenna. I want this range right all the way... We probably don't need that much, and that'll save a little bit of power if we drop to 20,000. And to be able to control it, I'm going to hop in the tick and do the same thing with its antenna. Let's whack this up to 20,000, and that should give me 20 kilometers of range each way. If we press Shift-K, we can go to control, grab our camera. Ta-da! We're flying our little recon drone. Oi. I've got to remember not to tap these controls, it would seem. Every time I hit the accelerators, we get this little bump, which is somewhat unpleasant. All right. We've got 23 minutes of charge if I'm accelerating. That's not too bad. Now, why am I not... 
Maybe I turned my dampers off. Ah, I think I turned them off. There we go. Now they're on. That's better. <laughs> Jeez, I was about to run into the cliff at 103 meters a second. That would have been disastrous. So thankfully this time, unlike when I went and taunted the enemy base before, I am not putting myself at risk. Just a rather cheap drone. And thanks to the script here... No, I can't see the enemy base even at zoom. Thanks to the script here, I'm only using three engines, three thrusters, which makes this thing very, very cheap. Alright, let's go in until we see a spawn come out. And then we'll turn tail and try and take it over the top of... Uh-oh. What the? Why did I... I'm not 20 k's away. Why did I lose... No! No, why did I lose... Oh, this is bad. This is so bad. Um... Um... We need... Off standby. Let's go. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We gotta get moving. We're gonna lose the drone. This is bad. No! Oh, man. I'm gonna have to build the whole thing again. What a pain. Oh, it's still there. It's still there. It's still there. Maybe I can land in time and control it. I don't know why I lost control of it. That didn't make sense. Both antennas are out at beyond the range that it is away from me. Oh, dear. Ooh. I got lucky then. Okay, park. Let's grab control. Why can't I control it? No. No, what's going on? Why can't I control it? Say what happens when I hop out. Can I control it now? My control ready. Cannot establish connection to grid. What? Why is that happening? Ah! No, this is too much time pressure for me. I can't handle it. <laughs> What's going on? Why did I lose control of my grid? This doesn't make sense. Why can't I get it back? There's, I can't get terminal control of it. This doesn't make sense. Oh dear. The fleeting rival is getting close to it. This is bad. This is very bad. Oops. Hit the ground a bit hard then. I can't reach it. No. Oh. No, this is... Why can't I even access this? Well, that doesn't make sense. Huh. I can't even access the terminal on my rover. Don't know how the antenna turned off. But that's bad. Uh, oh no, not what I wanted to press. No, control. Control. Phew. Oh, fleeting rival. It's close. Oh. How did my antenna turn off? I must have been using the relay from another antenna back at base. Oh, jeez. Okay, the fleeting rival's there. We're still 3Ks out. <laughs> oh, man. That was stressful. Um... It's really, really slow. Okay. I'm going to try and skirt around it. See if we can get a view on the base just while outrunning that fleeting rival because it is taking forever to get here. Hopefully now I actually have 20 kilometers of range since I'm properly using the ticks antenna this time. Okay. I think I might be able to get a view on it. Let's have a look. Whoop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stable. Okay. So it looks like the antenna is on top of the base. We've got a turret on the left-hand side there. I reckon we've got one on the other side. Let's see if we can get around there and have a proper look at it. It's one of the standard mining bases, it seems. What about the terrain? Can I get 
a ground vehicle there. I might be able to even sneak up relatively close to the base using the terrain as cover. That could be handy. Now, the fleeting rival is still 2k's away, so I've got plenty of room. Let's have another pause and have a look. Oh, oh. Okay. Oh no, there's another one spawned. That's bad. And that's a stinging adversary. Oh, that could be worse. Uh, let's... Uh. Can we get closer while we chance it? Two k's away. That thing's definitely coming at me faster. Alright, time to bail. I think we've gotten all the recon we can. So there's a turret on each side. We've got some low ground and that should be a slope that we could climb with wheels up in the middle there if we go up this way we might get cover from the turrets for a while i don't like my chances of trying to attack it from the high ground because that would mean a long way round and i don't know what other bases are in the area but i suppose now that i've got a recon drone i could try and find that out Okay, looks like we're gaining ground on those, so let's head back, and I'm going to land this... Uh oh, what's going on? Why did you start tilting? That's not helpful. Not helpful at all. There's 17 minutes back left. I reckon I could probably fly this back to base, actually, rather than trying to build a rotor onto the tick. Let's head back to the base. Oh no, 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 bad idea, bad idea. <laughs> oh, I almost did that thing that I really, 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 really didn't want to do. Of leading enemies back to my base. If those two enemy drones are chasing me, they would have followed me the whole way back. And if they didn't fly over the top of the sandbags, I was going to be in very, very big trouble. Okay, so what do we got? We got the fleeting rival and the stinging as adversary both coming in. Let's go down, land, and stand by. Okay, back in the tick. That's where I want to be. For some reason I can't control it after I get out of the drone control. And I guess we just wait now? Maybe? Ooh. Let's use some spectator cam cheating to get some interesting shots. I'm not going to use the spectator cam to cheat and spy on the base, because that's just silly. But this, and that feels way too cheaty. But, you know, for some interesting shots of something that I've already seen, I will definitely follow it. How did this get damaged? Is that why it's going so slowly? Interesting. I don't like the look of where this is headed. Um, they seem to be heading toward me. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that at all. <laughs> Let's get to safe ground. I'd like to think that I would have noticed that even if I wasn't in spectator camp following it. As they gradually moved in on me. And I probably would have. In fact, I'm almost certain I would have noticed that as the enemy got closer and closer. Now, fleeting rival 2.3 k's away. Let's get a bit more distance between us and the beacons of the sandbags. Probably, let's try and keep ourselves at about our Gatling turrets range. Or, you know, the cliff in front of us will stop us, so let's stop there before I do something silly and run into the cliff. Let's go back to spectator. Ah, where is it? Here we go. I don't know what I'm going to do if this is too high. If it doesn't start dropping soon, it's going to just fly straight over those and go who knows where. Hmm. Let's watch. We will find out. 
Oh, go away, sticky keys. I know I was pressing shift on and off. I didn't even realise I had sticky keys anymore. Okay, we're almost approaching the sandbags. What's going to happen? I think we might be too high up. Oh dear. Oh dear dear. Oh, this is a problem. This is a big problem. This is a very big problem. Uh, I don't like this at all. I need to get above it. I need to get above it. Because its gun shoots down. Go up, go up, go up. At least I'm pretty sure its gun shoots down. Come on! Go, you good tick! Take it out! Fight for our base! Fight for our future! Yes! Okay, it's down. Alright, I think we're gonna have to take out the other one as well. <laughs> yeah, good job, sandbags. You helped after all the work was done. Typical. Alright. Let's wait until the stinging adversary is closer before we attempt the same maneuver on it. Oh jeez. That was... That was terrifying. I'm not happy that this ended this way. I mean, I'm happy that I took it out, but I'm not happy that I've had to use the tick actually in battle. And I really hope this thing doesn't have a gun on top. This is like that flying predator's... the apex flying predator doesn't look up. Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can take this one out too. I think it's going down. I think it's getting hit by the sandbags. It's going into the ground. Yes! Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> oh man. Oh man, I am so glad I have the tick. I'm so glad I used it to pilot the drone. Because if I didn't have this down here, I was in so much trouble. Oh. <laughs> wow. Well, I think that is a great note to end on. I know I said I wanted to put brake lights on to our goose and a few other bits and pieces, but man. That was a bit of excitement. We got a little bit of recon done, but yeah, some genuine excitement there for me. Oh, stop shooting. It's dead, all right. I need to have a control for the gun. Let's turn you off. Oh. Wow. Well. <sighs> oh, man. <laughs> okay, so here's a new idea. We can take those out quite easily from being above them. As long as I'm out of range of the base, I'm okay. Huh. We could take advantage of that. Well, they'll be adding to the brake lights to the goose. There'll be a whole bunch of additions to the base. There's more shenanigans like I just did then because that was kind of fun all that and plenty more to come so I'll see you then